Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the Ramadan edition Inshallah we'll be going through the Ahkams in regards to fasting By His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Salik Shirazi I'm your host Mohsin Shah and joining me is Sheikh Ma'as Assalamualaikum Sheikh Na Assalamualaikum warahmatullah I would like to congratulate you on this day of the Wiladat of Imam Hassan Mashallah, you got the nice bright colours on Wa as'adallah ya makum Asad Sheikh Na, we've been talking about uh, you know the different um, aspects of fasting and the ahkam in regards to fasting and what I wanted to discuss today was in regards to qadha and kafara uh, sometimes only a qadha is necessary sometimes a qadha and a kafara is necessary so let's go for our first question what are the cases that necessitates a fast to be qadha but there's no need for kafara inshallah a'udhu billah as-sami' al-alim min ash-shaytan al-rajim bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد. Well, there are four main um, cases for uh, the um, for the one who needs only to do the qada for fasting and not to pay kafara. So let's begin with the first one. Now, if that person by purpose and with his own intention, vomits while he's fasting during the month of Ramadan. In this case, his fast will be, of course, batil and invalid, but there's no kafara to pay. So he only has to um, do the qada afterwards, and there's no kafara. So vomiting by purpose will cause um, the fast batil and only qada required with no kafara. Also, if somebody by purpose immerses his head inside the water, the entire head inside the water, which I mentioned that was one of the mubtalat of, of the fasting, again, um, that person that doesn't need to do to pay kafara, it's just the qada. And also, the one who uses the enema injection. That enema injection, as we mentioned, one of the muftarat and invalidates fast. If that person deliberately used that injection, then they have to do the qada only, but no kafara. That's the first case. The second case, if somebody um, makes the intention of not fasting on that day of the month of Ramadan, he decides not to fast, khalas. Or, let's say he decides and makes the intention to commit one of the muftarat, to eat, to drink, to, to do such and such, that breaks the fast. The minute or the second he makes that intention of breaking the fast in the daytime of the Ramadan, his fast will, will be invalidated. And he must do qada, but no kafar. But because he didn't actually um, eat or drink uh, by purpose. It ju was just the intention. So just the intention will, will break the fast, will um, make the fast invalid and eventually he needs to pay no kafara only to do the qaba afterwards. Okay. So that's the, the second scenario with this regard. The third scenario is if somebody, especially those who are in the age of adolescence and bulugh, when they reach that age, so many of the youth uh, don't know the ahkam of, of bulugh, for example. They have to do ghusul janaba, for example. It becomes wajib for them. How to perform the wudu, for example, properly, and so forth. Now, if somebody um, didn't know that they have to do ghusul of janaba, and they began their fast, so they fast for many days, and then they were told that you have to do ghusul janaba. You can't fast while you're in the state of janab. In this case, that person needs to only do qada, but no kafara, with this regard. Um, the fourth uh, case and scenario is if somebody um, 
puts a, a bit of water in his mouth, for example, uh, to cool down or for any reason, and that water suddenly goes inside his throat. Now, because he wasn't intending to drink that water, just to cool down his mouth, he's too thirsty, it's you know, very hot weather, for example, in Arabia, for example, just to cool down his mouth. But unintentionally, the water went inside his throat. In this case, he only needs to do the qada, but uh, there's no kafara to pay as well uh, for this scenario. So, Sheikh, what you're saying is that even if I was to drink some water accidentally, or if I'm doing wudu, and I, I, I'm, I'm putting water in my mouth, which is not hard to do, and if I accidentally drink it, then I, I have to do a qada? Well, if somebody um, raises his mouth with water for the purpose of wudu, or sniffs and inhales water in, inside his, his nose, which is mustahab, as you know, one of the mustahabat of wudu, is to raise your mouth with water and to throw out the water from your mouth and to sniff or inhale the water inside your nose. That's mustahab. Um, if that happens in the wudu and suddenly drops of water went inside the throat, either by the mouth or by the nose, in this case, there's no need to do the qada. Okay. That, that's fine. For, for this purpose, for the wudu purpose, there's no issue with it. Um, the, the, the fasting is correct and, and, and valid. And Sheikh, now what happens if um, I'm fasting and I start to become ill and I become so ill that I have to break my fast? Um, do I have to do a qada for this fast? Or is, 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 there, is there some sort of loophole? Or is there even a kafara to pay? Well, sometimes the one gets really thirsty. You know, you, you are in, in a, let's say, a Middle East country. Uh, the, the month of Ramadan is in the middle of, of the summer. And some people get uh, that feeling of tiredness, extremely thirsty, or sometimes hungry, extremely. You know, he's a builder, a person who works in buildings. And um, other people, for example, they're driving, taxi driver, and so forth and they feel extremely thirsty. In this case, if it's for the person to continue fasting would be difficult. They can't bear it. In this case, uh, they can break their fast, let's say, to drink that amount of water, which is required. And then um, they have to do the qada for that day. But there's no kafara because that, that wasn't intentional, uh, deliberate, just to break the fast as a, as a sin, as a ma'asiyah. It's just because of overheated, you know, feeling really exhausted, extreme hunger, mm -hmm. extreme thirst. Hydration. Then they can uh, drink that amount of water or eat the amount of required. And then they do the qada afterwards. Ahsan, but ahsan, no kafar, ahsan. of course, as I ahsan. mentioned. Shaykh, what about young children, you know, that um, you know, you know, become baloog and they start to fast? Um, do they have to do anything, as in the qada from the previous years or anything like that? Well, for the children, because they begin their uh, wajibat and ahkam in the age of adolescence and bulugh, they don't have to go back and do the qada for the time of their childhood. They don't have to actually do the qada for the time in which they were not mukallaf, they were not wajib to do the ahkam of shari'iyah they can just ignore it خلاص. you know you were they were in, in that position of being children um, um, not not baligh for example they can uh, begin their ahkam when they're baligh onwards but anything happens while they're baligh because sometimes as, as i've said in the time of bulug sometimes they don't know how to do the wudu they do it wrong in the wrong way they don't do the Ghusl Janaba, for example, mistakenly. They have to do the Qadha for whatever was missed as a, as a uh, cause of not knowing the Ahkam exactly how to do the Wudu or how to do the Ghusl. It's just that they have to do the Qadha for that period. But before that, in childhood, they don't have to do anything. Sheikh, uh, I remember you saying that um, if someone is insane, uh, they don't have to do uh, the fast, they don't have to keep the fast. What happens with those patients which were insane for two or three, four, five years, and now they've cured? 
of the insanity. They've cured from their uh, medical, uh, psychological issue. Um, do they have to do the qada of the four or five years that they've missed? Well, for those who were insane in some period of time, months or years, they don't have to do the qada for the, uh, for the missed, uh, uh, you know, fasting period. So um, the qada is only when they are aware, they have the full awareness. So they don't have to do any qada for that, that's fine. What about someone who has converted or reverted to the, the faith of the Ahlul Bayt and has 20, 30, 40 years of missed fast? So do they have to do the qada of what they've missed? Well, the qada with regard to the fasting um, for the non-Muslims who become uh, eventually Muslims and convert to Islam, um, what we have a rule is uh, that al-Islam yajubbu ma qabla. So it's, when he becomes Muslim, it will override the previous okay. a'mal and the previous years that he didn't do. So he starts fresh as if he now becomes baligh. And he begins just to start the ahkam of salah, Psalm, hajj, and so forth. So no, of course, uh, the non-Muslim who became Muslim, they don't have to do the, um, the salah or the psalm, even qada. So they just uh, begin and start from fresh um, as a new convert to this great religion. So that's, subhanAllah, one of the blessings of Allah that they don't have to do the 30, 40 years worth of, you know, pray and yes. salah and, and so forth. Alhamdulillah. Shaykhna, what about those who have converted from uh, a different school of thought within Islam, the Shia Islam? Uh, obviously, they've had different fasting rules. Do they have to do the qada of those fasting that they've done or is it satisfactory and valid? Well, those who convert to the true path of Ahl Bayt from a different sect of Islam, if they did all the a'mal in terms of uh, the obligatory fast, prayers and so forth, and we talk about the fast for the moment, according to the rule of their madhab, whatever the madhab and, and the sect they followed, if they properly did the fast in their madhab and uh, completed the, the, the fasting period, then uh, the, the fasting will be accepted from them as long as they did it in their madhab. So they don't have to actually do any qada for that, no kafar, no qada. So also the blessing for them that they don't have to go back and repeat 40, 50 years worth of of, of, of uh, fasting, just imagine how would that be difficult for them. So Alhamdulillah, this is also a mercy for them from Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. So Shaykhna, um, in regards to having the intention of fasting, um, what happens if one went to sleep and didn't make the intention to fast the next day? And you know, he, and, you know, he got up for suhoor and, and then he, he, he kept his fast. Uh, you know, he ate his food and then did, did his fajr and, and did refrain from eating throughout the whole day. But the previous night he didn't have the intention. Well, in this case, it is obligatory for that individual um, who slept during the night without the intention of fasting the following day is to do the qada. Okay. But if that, if he slept till Adhan al dhuhr as I've, oh, okay. I've mentioned, this is the, the, the boundary, the edge, where it breaks the mm -hmm. fast if the one did not do the intention. So if he sleeps till Adhan al-Dhuhr, with no intention of fasting the prior night, then the fast would be invalidated and he needs to, or she needs to do the qada of that day. And Shaykhna, what about a person who deliberately breaks his fast? Does he have a qada to do? or a kafara, or both? Well, for such case, if the one on purpose breaks his fast, let's say drinks a cup of, a cup of water, or eats something on purpose, and he knows it's you know, haram to do so, he's fasting, it's the month of Ramadan. In this case, he must do the qada first, number one. And number two, has the option of paying either with the kafara, Number one, either to fast 
two consecutive months. So he fasts 31 days continuous yes. as kafara, and then he can break but the days uh, afterwards for the, for the next month. Or he can feed 60 poor people, give them food, wheat, barley, uh, the bread, yes. uh, raisins and dates and so forth. Yes. So he can choose either to pay or to fast. And God forbid if he has a slave, he has to free his slave. Well, we don't have any slavery uh, period in this time, so Excellent. there's no issue with it. Thank you very much, Sheikh Man, and thank you for all those joining us today. Inshallah, it's been very beneficial for you. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh, mm -hmm.